whether you need lots of brim to go raiding or just a little bit to make explosive arrows to get star metal, you're gonna need brimstone. The most common location being the Shattered Springs. Although it can be a bit of a tedious task coming here, especially on multiplayer servers, it's often already harvested. Plus, you're gonna need yourself a gas mask of some type. That gas mask being one of the easiest and cheapest to mask to make you need a tier 2 altar and these type of ingredients. To make a regular sandstorm mask, you're gonna need some steel bars, which is pretty easy to come by, and some light padding. The more improved your bench, the cheaper it's going to be. But only 22 in the garrison bench. You'll also need a garrison bench to make a Yogate Chosen mask, which you can get from the Esoteric Library for some fragments of power. Check out my guide on those things over there at the Archivist. Or you can run over to the summoning place and try your luck at finding the Witch Doctor who is on occasion over here. Sometimes it's just a Yog priest and they have a random chance to drop the Witch Doctor mask. If you have been feeling brave and been doing some adventuring in the unnamed city, killing these different skeletons scattered about, you have a chance of getting some legendary armor. Some of that may be the Commander's Helm, which is the best gas protection you have because it has the most armor and the most durability on it. And as there are so many skeletons about, it's quite easy to do a run and get a good chance of getting one from them. Some nice insulated boots. But if you don't feel like doing all that and you don't feel like running around and slowly picking the brimstone while you're trying not to die and getting all messed up by these dudes, there are other places you can go. But whilst harvesting brimstone, for the most part, a lot of these places are one hit nodes. So it is good to have at least efficient harvest, but hard worker is good for the rest of the nodes that take multiple hits. But efficient harvest, when you hit it, you'll have a chance of getting twice the amount on that final hit. And seeing as they're one hit nodes, you get the point. Obviously the more carry capacity you have, the better, but you can bring a camel, you can bring a bearer, you can bring a bearer's backpack, or some weight capacity potions, some lasting feasts, something like that to buff your carry capacity so you can actually fight some stuff along the way because a lot of these places you will have to fight some stuff. But if you have a bearer with you, they'll do some fighting for you. But you can also have a camel mount and a camel follower and they have a lot of backpack space so that's pretty advisable and you can do a little bit of fighting yourself that way. The best type of pick you can use is one that you can craft readily but I like to use an obsidian one. It has the highest harvest amount of a craftable pick. But if you're feeling fancy, you can venture up into the jewel caves. Check out my separate video for black blood information. But instead of having like 540 better crafted with a durability blacksmith, FYI, we're going to have 1500 durability. And although technically not a legendary weapon per se, as it does not say, it cannot be repaired. So you do need to harvest multiple. And if you happen to have used it, you cannot put a kit on it. That applies for all weapons but legendaries you can't repair. So it is good to not use it and put an oil of bounty which will then give you a timer but will allow you to harvest much more. Its timer will go down once it's out so don't keep it out running around, put it away. One of the new places they added a brimstone to is the Silvermine Dungeon. Not too far from the Brimstone Lake so if you happen to be in the neighborhood and it's cleared out you can venture on down here just before the Scorpion King. See my separate dungeon guide if you'd like to know how to get there if you don't, but basically it's a straight line forward. And just down this little rampy area by the Scorpion King here, right before you get to the green gassy area where the Scorpion Queen is and the legendary key boxes, we'll find these little pillars. And they are in fact brimstone. The rocks on the ground are not brimstone, so don't bother hitting them. As you see, we did get a butt ton more brimstone from using that pick with the oil, so it is definitely worthy. There is a fair bit of an animation now for putting them away, so that's kind of annoying. Not the most brimstone in the world, but definitely something to get if you're running the dungeon at bare minimum. One of the easier locations to come is Sinner's Refuge. These are all exiles, so they're really easy to take out, and it's pretty decent levels to hit Brimstone, so it's nice to come here early game. It looks a little different around these parts. You're looking for these yellow rocks. There's a couple of hidden-ish ones in the ground. I generally take out all of these dudes, but you get a good chance to get some named thralls here. And right at the very end, there's also a guy where you can get some armor. All of this is good Brimstone to get. Some more. 
can definitely come out of here with a couple of thousand. You can tame these guys or you can kill them. You have the chance of getting that Azura armor. I guess I've pride of Azure before. Got my brain sometimes. A whole lot more brimstone right behind. But you'll often find this place has been cleared out also because people do come here for easy for thrall farming and levels and easy brimstone. And in that case, we head to Gulliman's tomb, a necessary place if you wish to remove your bracelet because there's a guy in here who drops a necessary thing. Bring a skinning knife if you wish to have a whole lot of hide for tar, which is pretty important for booms because you need a lot of tar. And there's a lot of reptiles in here and they're a good source of hide for tar. Again, we're looking for the yellow rocks. And our location is right here, pretty close to Sinner's Refuge, so you can do a little boop boopity between the two. Not quite as much in here as Sinner's Refuge, but definitely adds up. And this is the bad boy himself. He doesn't drop anything fun like demon blood, but you can get that jagged scourge stone piece. If you're in need of some echo and potentially a relic fragment and some maybe legendary goodness, come on over to Executioner's Entrance at the Death Whisper Ruins. Find a little thrall camp here with some sorcerers at it, some other goodness. Pretty easy to find, a whole lot of echo to be had. This cave does have a lot of brimstone in it compared to the other two caves and a fair chunk of iron ore. Skeletons are annoying and even at high level they have a chance to gank you and pin you in a corner which is just super fun. These ones are a little bit of a high level and though do only use Tafari shitty weapons so that's not too bad. A couple of gold and silver boxes about and this guy here will potentially drop an executioner's something. This time we got the, the blade and he always drops a relic shard. He's not too good for getting demon blood but every Every now and then you get a little bit and a missed opportunity to that not lead anywhere. They did add bones. Cool. Getting out the other little door, we'll find some more brimstone, but not quite as much through this way. All of the spiders. If you bring a Zath knife here and you hit the spiders, you get a chance of getting a whole lot more resources from those Zath bags. So that's a good thing to bring here. All of these yellow rocks are brimstone, but these pillars are not. So you can really go in either cave. I usually go that way because next I head over here. A random little loot box. We are at Squatter's Spot is Squat. I was about to call it Squatter's Spot. Shitty little fighter thralls about. But a couple of nodes of brimstone. It's nothing too crazy to write home to, write home about. But it definitely adds up, especially if you happen to be running past or have zero access to any other brimstone anywhere else as can happen on occasion. As this camp down here always has a blacksmith at it, it's good to come to try and get an early level tier 3 at least blacksmith to turn some of that iron reinforcements you've been crafting from your iron into steel reinforcements using a tier 3 or above blacksmith. Some steel fire and iron reinforcements. Best way to get your steel reinforcement if you're not just getting steel from loot boxes. I usually like to spend a lot of time in the jungle. For this strat you will likely need some type of breathing potion. You could use a Riptide, but you will it's use a breathing potion or a breathing mask. Check out my guide on that for the details. Every now and then, while swimming around, you will find these pillars bubbling in the water. And yes, they are in fact brimstone bubbles. You can hit these guys, but try not to drown. The second you run out of oxygen, you will start going down in HP rapidly. Picking them up by hand will yield way less. So every single one of these, we're going to get like 200 and something from, which is pretty handy. There's a lot of these pillars about in the water, everywhere in the jungle. They're really easy to find. I usually tend to get these couple at least while I'm grinding the random transcrafting thralls up at Degeta's little boundless lust here. Lots of fun thralls to potentially get and learn the Degeta religion. But one of the sneakier places and more than most likely it will always be here has been added into the volcano. After you touch your Serpentman recipe on the top of the Well of Skelos, jump into this giant beam of light. Eww. Very unsettling, I don't love looking at it. Directly behind us, run straight out the door from the opening. And you don't actually want to follow the path anywhere, like usual. Nah, we're going to jump down. And you can grab onto the side and not take damage pretty easily without being in god mode. I've got many a video of me demonstrating, if you don't believe me. But down here, we got all of the brimstone. Big nodes, little nodes. 
but it doesn't seem to be particularly anywhere else. Except for a couple of random bits every now and then. I don't think I've ever noticed that you could click on that. Anyway, I digress. A couple of random nodes up here around the lava. Get a loot box. It's a fun loot box. That's another fun loot box. So definitely worthy. Bring a skinning knife, get all of the reptile hide, all of the brimstone. It's a little bum palm. I don't usually go the official way because of it's long and you gotta fight stuff. But if you do, there is extra brimstone to be had and you can get that lizard hide, like I said. But the biggest concentration does seem to be right in the area where I showed you just before over here. Every single one of these will hit for 200 with that oil on there. Those are all the best places and ways I know of to get brimstone. So happy farming. If I miss somewhere, do chuck it up in the comments. I do tend to forget things because there's so many things in the game. But for the most part, there's a bunch of locations. Like I said, happy farming. Stick around for another guide on Conan Exiles on how to make more explosives. If you found this information informative, smash that like button. If you're not already, consider subscribing. It means a bunch. Until next time, I hope you have an excellent day, evening, night, morning, whatever it may be, whatever you may be, have a good one.